Today on Faith for Living, I want to draw you into a psalmist prayer about being a soldier. And in being a soldier, looking to the Lord and finding a faith for the battle and a faith for living. This is Faith for Living with Dr. Michael Milton. Today, Dr. Milton brings a message, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? Here now is Dr. Michael Milton. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire into his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now, my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O oh, you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O oh God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and lead me in a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord will endure forever. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I am a chaplain in the United States Army Reserve. Recently, I was on duty. And while I was on duty, I was observing one morning as I was going to my place of duty, I was observing a company of naval personnel, young Navy enlisted guys and gals. I used to be in the Navy years ago when I was a, a young man. Now I'm an Army officer, and at this particular base where I serve, it's a, a multi-service base, so we have Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, uh, Navy, Army, um, everyone's there. It's a multi-service base. Though it's really an Army base, but it's a training base, and so all the various services are there. So uh, what really caught my interest about this group is their cadence call. Now, if you don't know anything about the military, when you go from one place to another, particularly the Navy and uh particularly enlisted folk who are young in their career, when they go from point A to point B, they just don't walk there. They go in a group. They go in a company. They march together, left foot up, 
then right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And they have to keep that cadence going with a song. And so here's the song that they were singing. And uh, I just stopped for a while, leaned against my vehicle, and watched and listened to them sing this song. Here's what they were singing. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go. No, got the company commanders marching. He's like, everywhere we go. And then all the sailors, everywhere we go, people want to know, people want to know who we are, who we are. And so we tell them, so we tell them, we're not the army. Well, I got my attention. They're on an army base, and here they are, the Navy. We're not the army. We're not the army, the backpacking army, the backpacking army. Wow, that's pretty brave to be saying that. We're not the Air Force. We're not the Air Force, the high-flying Air Force, the high-flying Air Force. And they said this, and I thought, oh, boy, are they in for it. We're not the Marines, and that's the way they put it, Marines. We're not the Marines. They don't even look mean. They don't even look mean. We're not the Coast Guard. We're not the Coast Guard. They don't even work hard. They don't even work hard. We are the Navy. We are the Navy. The world's finest Navy. Hoo-ah! Hoo-ah! And I was captivated. So I ran up to them, and they said, "Uh uh-oh, Army officer's coming, stopping us, wondering what's going on. So he said, uh, he called them to the halt. And I said, uh, Petty Officer, I'm interested in this cadence call. Could I get the words to that? Well, he was relieved that I wasn't getting on to them. And uh, so they recited the words to me, and I had my telephone, and I, I just recorded the words. And I said, I like that. I like that a lot. And I said, tell me, tell me why you do that. Sir, we do that because we're the Navy, and because we're on an Army base, and because we're surrounded by Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and everything else. We need to remind ourselves who we are. And that's the cadence call I like to use when we're marching through this army base, that we're the Navy. I said, good for you. I like that. There are times as we march through foreign places in our own lives where we need a cadence call. We need to be reminded of who we are as God's children. We need to be reminded in the midst of a place that is not our home, that we have a home. We need to be reminded of our identity. And so David will have a cadence call of faith. And that's what I call Psalm 27, the cadence call of faith. And in Psalm 27, the psalmist David is marching through the midst of his enemies with a glorious cadence call. And this morning, today, I want you to consider David's cadence call and maybe seeing how you can adapt it into your own life. I did this in my own life. This is exactly where I went with the cadence call of those young sailors. I took that and I said, Lord, what what are you saying to me? I like this. Because that particular day, I felt like I was in a foreign land. Something had happened to me and my life and my family that had my mind far away when all of a sudden I heard this, this cadence call of these sailors. And that led me to Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? I want to give you the cadence call of David. So then, you're going to be able to march through the foreign land with a happy cadence call of faith, just like David. And the first part of the cadence call of David is this, affirmation. There is a resounding affirmation that is the overarching theme that brings strength to the Christian life. Here is the affirmation. 
before David goes out into battle, before David considers the enemy, he's going to affirm the captain. The Lord, capital L-O-R-D, in your English Bible, refers to the covenant name of God. The covenant God. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who made a covenant, who said, He's going to do for me what I can't do for myself. This God is my light and my salvation. Now, first of all, if He's your light, then He became the light. This wasn't something uh, that was a light that was within David, and he looked within himself and was able to see the illumination within his own soul and get things right. No, David is saying it's dark within one's own soul. But there is an alien light, an outside light, a brilliant light, an uncreated light that is the light of Almighty God. It's the light of the covenant God who does for us what we can't do for ourselves. And he says, you are my light. And that's the way you're saved. You can't be saved. You can't come to know God through anything within yourself. It's going to have to be from that alien light, from the uncreated light of Almighty God, the light of lights, as the covenant God himself Our Lord Jesus Christ comes to you through the power of His Holy Spirit as He is doing this morning. And you have an affirmation in your heart, in your life. The Lord is my light. I don't know God because of anything in me. I know God because of God coming to me. Because He knew me and knew about me before I knew about myself. He's my light. And what happens? He becomes my salvation. This is what David says, the Lord is my light. And then he says, he is my salvation. Salvation from what? From hell? From eternal separation from God? Salvation from what? Salvation from the purposeless, futile life that could be in this world. He is saved from that. He is saved unto a destiny. He is saved unto a purpose. He now has a hope. He now has a future. He now has a destiny. So the salvation is absolutely comprehensive. It's holistic. It's not only a salvation in the life to come. It's a salvation here. It's what Jesus meant when he said... I give you life and life abundant, not only eternal life, but abundant life here and now. And so David, in the midst of all the enemies in this foreign land, he begins with an affirmation. That is the cadence call of faith. You can't go off into the battle unless you have affirmed, first of all, who you are in Jesus Christ. What your relationship is with God. And I'm going to tell you that if you go off into the battle, and whether that battle is a battle at work, a battle of relationships, uh, a a battle of uh, just walking through this sinful world with all the physical challenges and problems that it presents, you are going to be walking into a nest of problems without an identity. And so you want to begin your cadence call. The cadence call of affirmation. Maybe it goes like this. You may laugh at me, but this helped me. And I actually wrote this down as I was sitting in my car that morning. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, people want to know, people want to know who I am, who I am. And so I tell them, so I tell them, I am a soldier, I am a soldier, a soldier of the cross, a soldier of the cross, a sinner saved by grace, a sinner saved by grace. So I am not afraid, I am not afraid, because light leads to salvation. And salvation leads to 
freedom from fear. Now, I can straighten up and put my shoulders back and face the financial challenges and the loss. It's not that I'm a stoic Christian and, and I just have a stiff upper lip and face life that way. No. It's because there's a cadence call of faith that I've got in my life. I'm a sinner saved by grace, by a covenant God who did what I couldn't do, lived the life I couldn't live and die the death that should have been mine by my Savior, Jesus Christ. I affirm that I am His adopted Son. And I affirm that He has become my light where I can know the truth and the truth sets me free. And I affirm that that has saved me completely, wholly. Not only to be with Him eternally, but I affirm that He's with me now. Of whom shall I be afraid? You have that affirmation. You have that first line down pat in the cadence call of faith in your own life. Well, David moves forward and David moves from affirmation to what I would call adversity. You see, he, he wants to ground himself and, and affirm himself in the reality of God and what God has done for himself, but now he's got to face, he's got to face the world. He's got, to, he's got to march through a foreign land. And so we move from affirmation to adversity. The reality of adversities that are the overarching trials, but for David and throughout all the Bible, those trials form sanctification in the Christian life. What we're going to see is that David, he affirms his identity, and then he says, I affirm also adversity. He speaks in verse 2 of my adversaries and my foes. He, he speaks in verse 3 of an army that is literally encamped against him. Now remember, David is not being totally metaphorical here. David was at war. He was a real soldier. Sadly, one time he was at war with his own boy, Absalom. How painful. David, though... will will admit that there's adversaries everywhere. Verse 6, his enemies are all around him. And he even admits in verse 10, my, my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. He's not saying that this has happened, but he's saying even if, he says, I, I, I'm facing the, the, the possibility of my own family turning against me. But here, here's something that's just absolutely, absolutely glorious. And I, I want you to see this. Verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Now, this is important. Because it's not just that David has adversaries. It is that because the Lord is his light and his salvation, of whom shall I fear? He names all the adversaries. But then he says, teach me your way and set me on a level path. Why? Because of my enemies. So the adversaries who have been used to hurt David, David says these same adversaries are going to be the ones who actually teach me about you. The adversaries, those who are my opponents, my foes, those who desire to kill me, are my teachers. It's almost like he was saying, come on, I want you to all come around me. It's like the general who was told that, uh, uh, sir, uh, the enemy is all around us and 
the confident general says, good, now they won't get away from us. And David is saying, you're surrounded by enemies. Good. Lord, what are you going to teach me? Glad you fellows all came. Because you see, you're going to be my teachers. The adversary of cancer. The adversary of relationship problems. The adversary of loss. The adversary of health problems. The, the, the little adversaries who may be trying to hurt you. If you're Christ, the very things that come against you become the things in the hands of the sovereign God that work to heal you and teach you. Teach me your way, O Lord, because of my enemies. So David has an affirmation. David deals with his adversaries. But here, now I want you to watch this because we're coming to the conclusion of the psalm. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we've moved from af- affirmation, adversaries, to now an aspiration. And what is his aspiration? Eternal life. I believe I'm going to look upon the goodness of the Lord and of the land of the living. Even if the adversary kills me, I'll keep on living. Now, if anyone tells you that there's no concept of resurrection in the Old Testament, will you please tell them about this passage? We will remind them that resurrection is embedded all in the Old Testament. It was the hope of the saints then as it is now. His aspiration was that he would look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It reminds me of old Job, the oldest book in the Bible, where Job is uh, surrounded by his friends who says, everything bad that's happened to you, the loss of your family, the boils on your skin, it's all your fault. You've sinned against God. Job, in the midst of this dark cloud of oppression, finally burst out. And he burst out. And he says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And that he shall stand on the earth in the last day, and I will see him with my own eyes. Same thing David is saying. That was the aspiration in Job's heart. It's the aspiration in the heart of David. It's the aspiration in my heart today. It gives me hope. I affirm. Everywhere I go, people want to know who I am, and I'll tell them I'm a sinner, saved by grace. Marching through a land of adversaries. But I'll also tell them I'm going somewhere. I asked those young sailors where they were going, and they told me, they said, well, we're going to class. We're going to class. We've got a destination. David needed to be reminded of this and strengthened in the Lord in this. And his destination is he was going to the land of the living. That's where I'm going. That's where you're going if you are the Lord's. And if you're not, I, I, I invite you to get in line with the rest of us struggling sailors and soldiers and marines and guardsmen and soldiers of the cross. Join the, join the company. Get in step with the Spirit. Receive the covenant God's invitation that He'll become your light and your salvation and your adversaries will become your teachers and He'll use the very thing that would seek to destroy you to advance you. And you have a destination, the land of the living. Therefore, David ends this with how we must end it. 
He couldn't say this unless he had gone through all the other things before. But he ends it by saying, Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. That's what I want to say to you. I don't want to say take courage and be a big boy and be a good girl. Take courage. Buck up and face your problems. Not what I want to say at all. I want to say affirm that there is a Savior. And from His life, you'll have a salvation. And from that a affirmation, you can face your adversaries because you're, you're, you're marching somewhere. You're going somewhere. And you're with a company of others called the church. Now, wait upon the Lord. Faith for Living is part of the ministry of Reformed Theological Seminary. And so this morning, we want to welcome you in again to that part of the program we call Profiles in Ministry. My name is Eric Hancox. I did not grow up a Christian. Uh, and was converted after college uh, through basically reading the Bible on my own. During that time, it became more and more clear that he might be placing a call upon me towards a full-time ministry. I've been very blessed by my time at RTS. Uh, what I consider how RTS has prepared me for future ministry, uh, I believe, is by placing me under men who have experienced, many of them in the pastorate, uh, who, even if they're not serving as full-time pastors, uh, have that exposure where they are preaching and teaching regularly. The Winsomely Reform motto really caught my attention. I kind of pulled at my heart, and um, that, that meant a lot to me to find a school where I felt like I could identify much of what I believed, uh, but wasn't required to be of a certain persuasion in order to attend and learn here. Well, with my degree from uh, RTS, I, I hope to go into pastoral ministry. I believe that's where the Lord is uh, calling me and what exactly that will look like we're still working out we're considering church planning uh, whether the lord would have us to return north to pennsylvania or remain in uh, north carolina we're not yet sure to be to be honest well donor money has uh, significantly uh, helped I, I would say enabled uh, my time at rts the scholarship the the funds we've received the help from donors has uh, made that possible it's bridged the gap and made it so that we're able to be here If you'd like to know more about Dr. Milton, visit our website at faithforliving.net. Well, Dr. Milton recently wrote a book called Songs in the Night, focusing on how the gospel can transform our pain into praise. Today, we're offering a free chapter taken from that book called Finding God in Spiritual Depression. Now, if you'd like to receive your free booklet, call us right now and ask for offer three. Again, ask for offer number three. Well, thanks for joining us today, and we hope you'll be with us again next week as Dr. Michael Milton teaches us how we can have faith for living.